<laughs> All right. Um, brainstorming. So again, um, you know, we're going through this relatively quickly. Um, but now's the time for you guys to, whether those ideas that were in the parking lot or uh, a chance for you to be generative, think of all the different things that, you know, people might have mentioned ideas when they were out, out talking to you. Well, you should do this. We get that all the time when we talk to people. And actually, around brainstorming, um, we have rules. We don't have a lot of rules at IDEO, as you saw with some of the, you know, as we talked about vans in our project spaces and people doing this and that. But we have rules around brainstorming because it's actually such an important part of our process. And because, as sort of David was speaking to yesterday, people lose their creative confidence if they aren't sort of put in a safe environment to brainstorm. So that's what we're trying to create here is a safe environment. So what is brainstorming? A semi-structured, team-based method of rapid idea generation. There's something going around recently, I think it was in the New York Times or something that said, uh, People have better ideas when they're by themselves. Um, we can talk about that later. I don't agree, um, but, uh, and hopefully you guys won't as well. I find the, deal, uh, the ability to build on other people's ideas is really powerful. So what does it look like? It looks like exactly what we have set up here. Um, groups of people about your size, post-it, sketching, energy, uh, and lots of ideas. Why brainstorm? Uh, I, I don't think you guys need to be convinced of this, but it's a way to generate ideas quickly, to just get unstuck. So a lot of times we'll be on a, you know, doing an engineering problem and you know, you've been working on it for a while and you just email a bunch of the engineers, say, hey, two o'clock, who can join for a brainstorm? And it just allows you to uh, get unstuck. That's another reason why we um, work in so many different industries. We work in the toy industry, the fashion industry, healthcare, because we can see the cross-pollination of different ways that um, different technologies or ways you do things, you know. I'm always paying attention to when I get into a car, how does the little rear view mirror mechanism work, because could that be applied to a medical device? So just always kind of uh, using ways to get unstuck, and you can only do that, I think, for having a group of people. The rules. The first one is absolutely most important, I think, and Dave, <laughs> David spoke about this last night, uh, or yesterday afternoon, deferring judgment. We, I believe, as sort of humans, however we're trained, eventually um, we're told to be smart, and by being smart is that we judge. And we don't do it necessarily like mean, like judging people, but we're taught to be critical. We're taught to be pretty critical in school, to evaluate, to kind of think about things. This is a time not to do that. So take that um, baggage that you've had on your shoulders or whatever it may be and create, this is a time when it's actually the opposite. It's encouraging wild ideas. I don't know why this kid is covered in tin foil, um, <laughs> but uh, again, as David was speaking about, you don't have to tell kids this, you know? Um, to encourage wild ideas. So this is the time, we always joke at IDEO, that if it's a mechanism brainstorming and Velcro and night and all and magnets, you know, haven't come out, it allows other people to build on your ideas. So someone else might be like, wow, that's really crazy. What if actually it was done this way? So building on the ideas of others. So it's a culture of saying yes and rather than no but. So if you have like, let's say you've, let's say someone is saying how to design a pen. You've designed 100 pens and they say something that you've, like, you've done a thesis on, right? And you know it wouldn't work that way. Say like, well, what if we actually did it this way? Like, just create that sort of positive encouragement rather than, rather than, nope, that wouldn't work, tried that, I'm Mr. Smarty Pants. That's not what we want here. Stay focused on the topic. Uh, that's not a very clear picture, which is a little uh, ironic, but uh, stay focused on the topic is uh, what we sort of did with the how might we question. So we could have sort of gotten you guys in a room today and said, all right, brainstorm on, Innovating around winter. You guys would have been like, oh, like, and it would have been sort of like, you would have gotten someplace, but we created, you know, these sort of, how uh, many that are both somewhere in between general and specific, but really stay focused on the topic. What, what are you brainstorming on? Uh, we're on five, there's only seven, so we're, we're, uh, we're almost there. One conversation at a time. This sort of goes back to the first point of, if someone else is talking over in the corner, they might have great ideas, and this group's talking over here, you're not able to, one, build on, on someone else's idea. You're feeling a little judged, because wait, are they not listening to me? So really try and focus on one conversation at a time. And I would, I would add to that probably one brief conversation at a time. We sometimes have clients who, this is their time to stand up and give their 10 minute elevator pitch on why their idea is the best. And this is not the time for that. This is the time, um, I'll show you a couple sort of tips at the end, to quickly jot down idea, share it, stick it up, move on. You'll have a chance to kind of come back to it and sort of um, uh, re-emphasize it where necessary. Be visual. Uh, again, I keep saying David spoke to, which, uh, but he spoke yesterday about sort of our fear of drawing. This is a chance to 
just sketch stuff. Uh, it's a lot more powerful than, this is why we encourage you to write with Sharpies so people can see it. A sketch is actually that much more powerful so you can quickly understand what, what, an, what you're trying to say through an idea. And the last one, go for quantity. Uh, lots of ideas. There's, there's, uh, this isn't the time to sit and think, and would that work? This is a chance to throw them out. We'll have a chance to be critical. So there are the rules, um, and there's a couple tips, three tips. The first one, it's not a concept until it's written down. So everyone's writing down. Don't have a scribe in your group because the scribe can't write as fast as you can write as a, as a group. Turn comments into concepts. We get this a lot where people say, let's say they're, you know, we really need to come up with an idea to make it safer here. It's like, yeah, I know, that's what we're brainstorming on. So actually turn the we need to think about into, I was thinking about this, here's a concept that would address that. <clears throat> so comments into concepts. Well, there's a lot of different creative ways to do this. Person who lives the farthest away from Hanover in each group is going to be sort of the table facilitator. All that means is stand up, collect the ideas. Sorry, not lives, is a grew up, grew up farthest. And you guys can decide whatever that means. But just find someone to be a table facilitator. Um, you're just the one in charge of kind of enforcing some of those rules and we'll help as well. Um, so pick, we'll do, we're going to brainstorm for about probably 40 minutes. We'll see how the energy goes. Plan to brainstorm around three different questions. So let's say 10 to 15 minutes a question. If you get stuck, grab another one. Or if you get stuck, kind of maybe reframe it or eat some more M&Ms or whatever you may need. Um, we'll do it for about 40 minutes. And yeah, any other questions you would ask? Has anyone not brainstormed before? Is this? Yeah, or flipped it around. Who's brainstormed before? So this might be a different approach, maybe or maybe not, but everybody's sort of tried this before, right? Most people. So there was no discussion of the ideas on there until they were done. Is that correct? Yeah, so you'll you'll have a time. What we're gonna do, just to give you a glimpse, we're gonna stop brainstorming and then you can kind of put on your, your critical thinking hat. What we're gonna do is give everyone sticky dots and you'll have a chance um, kind of by yourself just to go to your table and say what ideas stood out and everyone will vote and that will be the idea that you guys will eventually eventually converge on and prototype. And we'll do the same thing. We'll show you some kind of best practices of prototyping. So you will have a late. chance. That's, that's late. later. Yeah. So this is a time just to throw it out. Right. So yeah. in, the, in yeah. the theme of, again, like all of this, you get the idea here, is about sort of shaping your own experience as a designer and, and fueling your own creativity. This part is about keeping your creative momentum going. And that's what this is about. And there's a time for, that's why you're deferring judgment. We didn't say never judge, we said mm -hmm. defer judgment. <laughs> so this is all about creative momentum. You should be feeling good. The idea should be flowing, you know, that whole concept of flow. That's what this is about. Do we want to focus on a physical product versus say like, mm -hmm. like a service? Yeah. I would say yeah, anything. Every, everything is game. And we kept this topic broad enough so that you can be thinking about products to, you know, Increase efficiency of the plowing industry to you know community for Dartmouth students on campus. So it, yeah, product, service, space, environment, um, you name it. Right. Yeah. It's I, all I would actually game. encourage you not just to go to products if you're right. engineers and that's sort of used to being tangible. Go to sort of maybe a product with a service or an, an experience or a you know something that admissions rolls out you know from an experience standpoint, anything like that. And I like. Them. Um, so how might we... Yeah, Make people active, opportunity is the same thing, right? Because the same thing. Yeah, totally the same thing. Safety? Do we have safety up there? Yeah, that, that's cool. That's very product. Let's do it. Yeah. It's like, product, that's really specific. Uh, you can just circle the safety part. Make people right enjoy while they're out. The same like creating outdoor activity, right? Yeah, right. Other events. So either of these we can just... This should be one. Yeah, which one? I think... Yeah, I just... They're different. I mean, creating an event is different than uh, making, making people let's enjoy... Let's put this down here. If you have time, you can come back to this. That's just comfort. Basically, that's just like... We had that as a big one. Improve transportation, okay. Create more light is too specific. Although I like it, but then. I think we should put it in the idea of a uh, part. Because yeah. I really like the idea of the. Yeah, I, really yeah, like, I like the idea. Like Freshmen or lovers of winter or, and haters of oh, winter. Sweet. Yeah, peer group for fun. I like support good. groups. What's that? Oh, uh, and is it, which one do you want me to put those? Uh, I don't know. Um, They're both good. Great. Pump them up. Um, maybe 
Um, yeah. Nicole, what's that one? Winter Carnival every weekend. <laughs> I love it. Um, pen pals to get psyched. Pen pals, oh yeah. You're a facilitator, Jake. I am facilitator. Yay. Wait, he's a... Okay, I'm confused. Range of cards. What do you got, Ching? Funky Friday. Funky Friday. I love Funky Fridays. Okay, I've got peer mentoring for winter activities. One-on-one. -on -one. Teach people how to ski. Things like that. One on one. One on one. You got to decorate your cars. Decorate. Car decoration. Make, make that snow and ice look pretty. That would probably pump people up. Um, let's see. Um, eating groups. Eating groups. Hey, Princeton. <laughs> <laughs> We need to have uh, <laughs> Maybe, um... A dollar for a weekend? You know how like we have the ski for a dollar, but do that with different the, winter activities? So, she making it accessible. Yep. Campus, Campus scavenger hunt. <laughs> I want the takeaway from this to be that students from any discipline begin to get a sense of how exciting this field is and that they can, and they can use it themselves. This is the fourth workshop like this we've done in the last eight years. Um, and the idea has been to, to bring kind of a wider group on campus to begin to understand the possibilities of design and design thinking. Um, so these students, some of these students are in my class, but um, most of these students, but that was not the intention. Uh, it, was, it was essentially arranged around the opportunity of David Kelly's visit. Um, and the opportunity to <clears throat> learn from the expert um, professionals from IDEO uh, to bring bring some uh, more uh, understanding of design thinking process to the campus. After the workshop, I, they have a better understanding of how exciting the field is, um, how much fun it can be to work with people from diverse disciplines, um, and I think it's also generated a sort of wider understanding on campus of how design and design thinking can be used uh, for a broad range of issues and challenges. Um, so for example, <clears throat> the Design for America group I think grew out of excitement, general excitement from students, um, largely non-technical students, trying to find a venue um, and a means to use design, design thinking to address compelling social issues. Uh, zones, and they're not just going from place to place. And those people are marginalized in the winter because winter is very much like a place to place. Like we move from place to place, we have very determined like, pathways. Yeah. But where do the organic people go? Well, we're going to figure that out. Cool. Making winter exciting. Yeah. Great. We'll keep keep uh, Jim. If he gets too general or specific, jump on another question or help sort of go back to what your research was in terms of narrowing that a little bit. But yeah, cool. keep throwing up ideas. <laughs> um. An alarm clock. So it's like your one cup of coffee. So then it like. It's not in your kitchen, but it's right next to your bed, and then it wouldn't get cold. Or you'd have to get up for it to get cold. I was thinking, what if there was, like, the bottom of your boot, like, could just come off, and so, like, you just, like, flip it off and step out of it without having to take off your whole boot. If you love the one you're on, stay with it, but uh, mix it up. Grab a different one, brainstorm something different. No voting yet. No voting. What's that? What's that? This is um, increased perceived control of their environment. Mm. I you think guys? the meter tracking app thing. I like it as the emotional thing okay. as well. Yeah, I think it's a good in between. Yeah, so let's do that. Let's put it in between. Let's take a look at that. Positive energy to counteract certain people's negative energy and also just making things more efficient is like the general. Feeling yeah. of this, of I that, feel and the isolation.
Yeah. Yeah. I like that. It's like if we're successful with making these things and the emotional will just be a natural like positive externality of Design. Do you want to start with the color? Right? It's going good. It's going good. So I guess now we move on to create winter products. Winter yeah, products, so. yeah. <laughs> you can just like pull each other around the class or like, yeah, grab like one making for yourself. the transportation more fun. <laughs> exactly, yeah. So then like being out in the cold and having to move isn't so terribly yeah. helpful. Yeah. Yes. I'm not drawing. Well, sorry, I, I kind of interrupted you. Oh, no, that was it. Yeah. We'll, do the, we'll do the mood meter when we come back and share on this last, last section of prototyping. What we're going to do now, as um, Ella uh, alluded to, is now's your chance to not defer anymore, uh, to judge. Again, nicely judge. But so everyone's got sticky dots. Don't use the yellow, uh, you can use the yellow ones here. You can use the yellow ones, the translucent yellow ones don't work, but you guys got the right ones, okay. so. Um, everyone gets five votes, what do you think? Everyone gets five votes, colors don't matter. Uh, if you want to, this is sort of sometimes fun, use a green one as sort of your wildest idea. Oh yeah. I have one of each. <laughs> yeah, you guys can figure it out. Um, feel free to use one, one green dot as your wild idea, your one that's sort of like out there, and I wouldn't really, um, maybe pick it. The other thing it's useful to do is as before you guys start voting right now, um, just as a group quickly share what your criteria are. Like what's important? Is it about we want to have something that we could prototype, you know, implement next week or we want to have just a, something super far out there or something that has the biggest market segment. Just just externalize that. You don't have to necessarily share that back, but it's useful so it doesn't feel as arbitrary. So, we'll vote for about 5 minutes. Um, you can you can use this time, you can cluster the ideas if there's ones that overlap. Um, and this is, we'll give you, let's give you six ideas since you brainstorm on three questions. You can put all six of them on one post-it, um, but vote across all the different ideas you have. This is a chance to see which ones kind of feel like they're arising to the top. Any That's quick questions that, on that? These are all individual votes. You individual don't have votes. To this agree. is you as an individual kind of saying, I'm jazzed about this. Any quick questions on that? Did I miss anything? Great. Go and be nicely judgmental. <laughs> and so this is my this is my third time doing with Dartmouth students. So it's uh, there's a lot of sticky notes. Um, I'm impressed. Folks didn't need much encouragement. We sometimes with clients have a lot of it's a challenge to get them to uh, get things down. We have the one loud mouth in the room. So I think it's fun. Yeah. It's fun working with students. It's a neat group too. Like I think we did the the synthesis really really quickly. But I it was just I thought it was great. I worked with a lot of different schools at yeah. how. Everybody just jumped into it and was really comfortable working in that space. Working, I don't, do these students work together that much? No, they're from all over the place, right? I think, yeah, there's business school students. There's someone, I, I, I falsely tagged a table as a group of engineers and one girl said, I'm not an engineer. So I think, I think it's a, great. a mixture like, of folks. They've just yeah. like, come together so easily. To yeah. Just, to, to do this. yeah, which is a challenge as we find like working collaboration is you get different personalities and it's some people bring their school mindset of their ideas to be right. So it's what you try to teach out of them. Yeah.